In this example, we're going to try to find the expected value of the potential. And for the case of a harmonic oscillator, we know that the potential is given by this formula. And so we apply it directly into the formula. So we're considering the nth stationary state. So in order to find the expected value for this, we just place this term in the middle of the conjugate and xi n itself. And then as you can see, these are just constants. So we can just pull these out. And so we get this formula over here. And this integral that you see, this is really just the expected value of x squared. So this is just these constants times the expected value of x squared. So now you see that in order to calculate this, we'll have to evaluate this integral. But xi n itself is actually pretty complicated. And now we have two of these xi n's. And also there's this x squared term over here that's causing trouble. So evaluating this term directly is going to be very difficult. So one way to evaluate this integral without having to deal with the difficulties of solving this integral is that we need to redefine x in terms of something else. And we're actually going to, going to use our a plus and a minus operators for a, bit, for a bit of help. So recall that the definition of these operators is given by this expression over here. And we're going to try to express x in terms of a plus and a minus. And then we're going to substitute that alternate expression of x straight into this formula, and you'll see that most of the complications will just disappear. So in order to express x in terms of these operators over here, we can do that by first considering the sum of a plus and a minus. And so for a plus, this is going to be equal to minus ip plus m omega x. For a minus, this will be positive ip plus m omega x. So you see that these two terms, they cancel out. So in the end, we get these two operators added together is equal to these constants times 2m omega x. And then we can do a bit of rationalization to simplify it, to combine these constants. So we get 2m omega divided by h bar x. And so you see that x is equal to h bar divided by 2m omega a plus plus a minus. And so x squared, which is what we're interested in, we're interested in finding the expected value of x squared. So x squared is just uh, applying this operator two times. So the constants, they come together and the square root just disappears. So what this means is that applying x squared to a function is equivalent to applying this expression to a function. And here we can expand the brackets. So this is applying a plus two times, applying a minus a plus, and then applying a plus a minus, and then applying a minus squared. So now we can substitute this alternate expression of x squared straight into our integral over here. So what this means is that if we apply x squared to a function, so in this case it's just multiplying it to a function, so if we apply this x squared to this function, it is equivalent to applying all these operators to a function. So we're going to substitute that expression into this integral. So now we're going to focus on finding the expected value of x squared which is equal to the conjugate of xi n. And then, uh, so we will put x squared over here, and in our case, we're going to put down this alternate expression. So all these operators here will be applied to xi n dx. So I'm going to pull this, these constants out. And you can see that when we're trying to evaluate this integral over here, we're essentially dealing with several things. So I'm going to group them up so we can deal with them one by one. So first of all, you have this conjugate times the a plus operator applied two times to xi n plus the conjugate and then a minus a plus xi n and then plus the conjugate a plus a minus xi n and then plus the conjugate times a minus squared xi n dx. So you can see that in order to evaluate this expression, we need to integrate these four terms over here. So let's deal with them separately. So first of all, these two terms will be equal to 0. And the reason is because if you apply a plus 2 times 2 xi n, you get something that is proportional to xi n plus 2, because this lateral operator erases xi n to the stationary state corresponding to the n plus 
to the stage journey state. So uh, it's not going to be exactly xi n plus 2, but it's going to be proportional. So we're, uh, it's not exactly xi n plus 2 because you still need the normalizing constant. But uh, the constant itself is not important. When you integrate it, the constant it just goes out of the integral. And in the end, you're essentially just integrating xi n multiplied by xi n plus 2. And because these two functions are orthogonal as proved early in the book, these will have to be equal to 0. So the same thing goes on over here. This term here is proportional to xi n minus 2. So once again, since these two uh, subscripts are not equal because they're orthogonal, this is also going to be equal to 0. So that's uh, so these two terms we can just ignore. So now we need to focus on these two terms over here. And in order to deal with these two expressions, we're going to use one result that we derived earlier. So we know that a plus a minus xi n is equal to n plus xi n. And we also know that a minus a plus xi n is equal to n plus 1 xi n. So this, once again, we've proved earlier in our derivation of the properties of the harmonic oscillator. So now I'm going to use this result directly over here. So as you can see, I can just substitute this directly over here. a minus a plus, I can just substitute this term over here. It's just n plus 1 xi n plus 2. So let's do just that. So I'm just continuing off over here. So expected value of x squared is equal to these constants times the integral. So these two terms are 0. We can forget about them. And here we have uh, a minus a plus, which is just n plus 2, n plus 1 xi n squared dx. And then the same thing goes on over here. So this time it's a plus a minus, so it becomes n xi n. So now we add this integral. This time it's n and then xi n squared dx. And then of course I can just pull these constants out and then integrating this stationary state square is just equal to 1 because they're normalized. So in the end this is equal to h bar divided by 2m omega. So this is this whole thing is just equal to n plus 1. So n plus 1, and this whole thing is just equal to n plus n. So this whole thing is equal to n plus 1 because integrating this term is just equal to 1, integrating this term is just equal to 1. So this is what the expected value of x squared is. So let's just copy this result out. So the expected value of x squared is equal to these constants times 2n plus 1. So now going back to the original problem, we are finding the, the expected value of, uh, of the potential which is equal to these constants times x squared. And as we've seen earlier, we can just pull these constants out. So you get these constants times the expected value of x squared. And this we've just evaluated to be equal to this. So we can just substitute that straight in. And you can see that these cancel out. So in the end, you have 1 half. So 1 half. And then this 2 over here is going to go inside the bracket. So we get n plus 1 half h omega. And the reason why I did not put that one half inside this bracket as well is that uh, one interesting comparison to do is to consider the energy of the n stationary state. So recall the formula for the energy level for the n state is equal to n plus one half h bar omega. And so you see that the potential essentially just eats up half of the total energy. So this is the total energy and this is the expected amount of potential energy. And you can see that it's just half of this. So this is a pretty interesting